Wouldn't it be nice to know exactly what you're gonna teach on Monday every single week and not really have to worry about what you're gonna do first thing Monday morning? Weekend chat. You're gonna love it. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Ashley, AKA Senorita Spanish. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you click that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified of every new video that I create for you. The routine that we're talking about today is called weekend chat, and you can do it on Fridays or you can do it on Mondays. You can do it on Fridays and Mondays. You can do it before a long break. You can do it after a long break. It is super flexible, and it's a really awesome way to build classroom community, practice the future tense, and practice the preterite or past tenses. And I do this even with my novices. It's a really good way to just kind of gradually introduce them to this topic because they will just start to naturally use it to describe things that matter to them, that are important to them. And then all of a sudden you'll get to like your preterite unit if you teach one and your kids will be like, oh, we already recognize all of this stuff. Such a good kind of sneaky way to get those tenses in there in a way that's very natural and is a way that's going to have your students sharing about stuff that is important to them building community, building relationships. What I wanted to give you today is a whole bunch of different ways you can use the same routine that's still going to be practicing those same structures, that's still going to be having your students share about what they did over the weekend, but in ways that scaffold the language task for your novices, build to higher levels for your upper level students, and also give you some flexibility so it's not always the profe show, right? Sometimes it's gonna be students doing independent work, small group, partner, whole class, give you a whole bunch of different options for ways that you could do this routine without it being like a burden on you so you can look forward to doing it every week. All right, let's dig right into the very first example that I have for you, and I just call it story time, or <laughs> let's chat about profe's weekend, basically. So this is not your students sharing about their weekend. This is you sharing about your weekend how real and how made up it is is up to you and how much you want to share with your students but basically it's like storytelling with you as the center and your family or your characters or <laughs> your pets so just tell them about your weekend and you maybe write on the whiteboard or maybe you have pictures in slides but you're just telling them what you did quickly briefly as if it were a story that is the most compelling story ever because you you're super interesting, obviously. Story time is obviously really great for your novice students because they are getting 100% input. They are not asked to output pretty much anything unless you are doing some circling and giving them like yes or no questions. If you're not familiar with circling, I have a blog post on it. I will link it for you in the description of this video. Another option that's really great for your novices is just Quizlet or any other website or digital game where they're practicing the yo forms. And this isn't one that I do very often, but sometimes you get to a Friday and you're like, I can't, <laughs> I'm tired, or you're starting a Monday and you're really tired, this is just a really simple option. I just give my students like five minutes or eight minutes, put a timer on the screen, send them to the Quizlet set, and they just play with the vocabulary. And then after that timer is done, I just tell students, pick one thing from the set that you did this weekend, tell your neighbor, okay. And you can change that up, right? If you don't love Quizlet or you don't have Quizlet, you could use quizzes, you could use GimKit, you could use Kahoot, you could use whatever you wanted where the focus is sentences saying like, I did this this weekend. So you're just practicing, I did this, I did this, I did this. And then again, at the end of the game or the end of the time, you're just gonna have students turn to a partner or maybe get up and go find somebody and tell them one thing you did this weekend and maybe you have the options projected on the screen for them. Just a really quick way to kind of bring it all back together. The digital game weekend chat is a really flexible option for you when you just need a day. A few more options for things that are a little bit less you, but really scaffolded for your novices are some print and go writing sheets. So I just want to kind of show you some examples. This one is read and circle where you went. So the pictures are just illustrating, you know, all restaurant, all cine, all mall, all supermercado, to just give them some more visual support. And then the second half says que hiciste. This one has the English translations underneath super scaffolded for novices, but they just circle what they did. And then after they've circled here and here down in the bottom, they write four sentences about their own weekend. And this is really basically copying a sentence from here or from here. So they're producing it, but it's really, really, really 
low skill because they have them right there for them. So they're able to produce something about their weekend in a very scaffolded way. This is kind of the same idea, but the next level up. So the second part does not have the English for them. So if a class has been working for this for a while, they're probably gonna recognize yo dormi mucho because a lot of them tend to say that. So if they're ready for removing the English, that would be the next version. And then same thing down here, they're gonna use this part and this part and write sentences about their own weekend. Another option that is still pretty scaffolded for them is basically like saying, I did this, I did not do this, and then writing a sentence. So over here is a sentence, and then it says yo tambien or yo no. So they're gonna read the sentence and they're gonna say, yes, I did that, or no, I didn't. And then over here on the side, they're gonna write a sentence to say what they did. So if it says yo fui a un restaurante and they said yo tambien, they're gonna write yo fui a un restaurante. And if they said yo no, they're gonna say yo no fui a un restaurante. So another option for a really simple weekend chat that's again, just them working independently. Maybe it's a little bit quieter, maybe you, just need kind of a way to ease back into your week is doing like a timed writing. And I have a blog post on time writing if you're not familiar with it, but this is specifically giving them just a chunk of time to write about their weekend. And sometimes, right, depending on where my students are, sometimes it's just take out a sheet of paper, you have this much time on the clock, write about your weekend. And sometimes I've printed and made copies of a sheet like this, where it's, you know, saying, adonde fuiste to fin de semana pasado, que hiciste. And then down on the bottom, there's some things to kind of support them, to kind of guide them. So that way they're giving me more information. They're not just having to produce everything on their own, but it's just a really nice independent activity, a really easy way for them to share about what they did. Another kind of lower prep option for you, but a little bit more mobile for them is to print off some sentence starters or to just write them all over your whiteboard Basically, you would write a bunch of sentences like Yo jugué al basketball o, Yo dormí mucho Yo fui a un restaurante Yo pasé tiempo con mis amigos Yo, right? A whole bunch of different sentences that your students may or may not have done and as they're coming into class, you hand them a whiteboard marker and you just say, go sign your name. So then they would just go write their name underneath whatever activity they did and you give them a little bit of time to do that. And after they're all done, they're all back in their seats, you just walk around and you just talk about it. So it's almost like a, a little bit of a, like a card talk where students would write about what they did over the weekend or draw what they did over the weekend and then you're just gonna discuss it as a whole class. Super simple, super low prep but they're up and moving. Here's another example that's kind of print and go. It's called find someone who, or maybe you've called it human bingo. They walk around and they ask their classmates questions from the box. So like this one is hiciste tarea. And if the student, the other student says si, then they're gonna sign their names and then they're gonna ask, right, visitaste a familia. If you say si, you sign your name. And if they say no, go find somebody else. There are two versions of this sheet. So one is just the questions. The second version of this sheet asks a little bit more information. You're not just asking them yes or no questions. It's things like, ¿Fuiste a un partido? Sí. Oh, ¿Tu equipo ganó? Right, tell me more information about the thing you just told me you did. ¿Trabajaste? Sí. Oh, ¿dónde? ¿Dónde trabajas? So you're kind of pulling in more of that conversation, again, in a scaffolded way. So you're getting some more support for your students and they're having some discussion. I forgot to mention both of these are free downloads, so just check the description. Another option that involves students talking to each other more and not so much you kind of like leading the show are conversation cards. And these are printable or digital, but <laughs> basically they draw a card and then they ask a group member, pasaste tiempo con amigos? And then that group of member will answer. You could also do it where one person draws, asks a question and everybody around their table answers. There's a couple of different things. Usually if I use these, I will just print off copies for, you know, enough for all of my small groups, throw them in the middle, I'll put a timer on the screen and I'll say, go. <laughs> and then they just draw cards and they talk to each other. Again, super easy to do digitally or on paper. It's a nice option for stations or a nice option for warm up. That's just really low prep. I make a copy of these at the beginning of the year and throw them in my file cabinet so I'm just ready. A whole group option where they are interacting with each other, but again, in a very scaffolded, very simple way that doesn't involve them like presenting to the class is two truths and a lie. It's super simple. All they do as they come in is I just print off a bunch of these sheets or you could you could have them do that on just a slip of paper. I found that I get less students screwing up the game if I just give them these little slips of paper. So just like with the conversation cards, I'll just print a whole bunch of them and then I'll pull them out of my file cabinet when I feel like doing this activity. If you've never played Two Truths and a Lie before, basically what they do is they write two true things about their weekend and they write one false thing about their weekend. Then they all give me these slips and I'll say, okay, we're reading about 
Bob's weekend. So I'm reading the sentences from Bobby and I say, okay, sentence, sentence, sentence. And in their small groups, they're gonna have a little quick discussion and then they're gonna write on their whiteboard and they're gonna say, you know, uno is the lie or dos is the lie or whatever. Everybody's got their answer up. We go to Bobby, Bobby, which one is the lie? And he's like, oh, numero dos. And anybody who guessed the lie correctly, I give them a point on the board. That's it, that's the game. Lots of buy-in, they get really into trying to figure out like what was the lie and trying to like trick their classmates. Like, I didn't go to McDonald's, I went to Burger King. <sighs> you know, like, okay, way easy. They will play this forever. So if you really don't have a plan on Monday, just print off a bunch of these, you're good to go. You don't even have to print them. I literally just like to do this because I write true, true, false, and I have a spot for their names, so I know the answer too. Two more whole group activities that are really simple. One is from Erin at the Engaged Spanish Classroom. Love you. She calls it mano or manos, and it's basically like yes or no questions or either or questions where the students signal their responses with one hand or two hands. It is a really good way of kind of like easing them into the language without requiring them to even say anything ver like verbally. So you're seeing that they understood because they're signaling, you know, one or two hands, and you're able to really quickly scan the room and see everybody's answer. I will link to her activity in the description of this video, of course. P.S. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you like it. If you haven't yet, click that subscribe button and ring that bell so you get notified of all new videos. Thanks. Another option is to just do like a series of scaffolded questions. So I just have a set of Google Slides that I project on the screen behind me and they're yes or no questions and then they kind of become more complex as we go. There's a whole bunch of yes or no questions and then there's some that are yes with options for them to kind of level up their language and then there's some more open-ended questions. So we just kind of build through that presentation throughout the year. The final option that I have for you is what I just call after break weekend chat. And it's still talking about what they did while they were gone from school. It's still kind of checking in and giving a chance to reconnect. But anytime we've been gone for longer than two days, I like to give them more opportunities to kind of fill me in on whatever happened. There are some write and draw sheets or there's some Google Slides options, but basically it's them sharing more about themselves and everything that they did in a really scaffolded and supported way or a more open-ended way depending on the level that you choose and which things you assign to your students. It's kind of like a seasonally fun idea to share with your students so that way they can tell you about what they did while they were gone and you can hear about what they did, reconnect with them, but it's a little bit more whimsical because it's seasonal. <laughs> So there you have it. That's a whole bunch of different ways you could use weekend chat with your students. I hope that's helpful for you. I do have a set of slides that describes basically like the setup for a bunch of these different activities that I mentioned. I will link to them in the description below that you can just grab and use and tweak, modify for your own classes. All of the things that I held up as examples, I'll make sure to link in the description below. If you liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up so YouTube knows you liked it. And then also make sure you click subscribe and ring that bell so you hear about any new videos that I create for you in the future. I'll see you in the next one.